Atop Witchbury Hill stands the Witchbury Obelisk, erected in 1747 by the first Baron Littleton, owner of nearby Hagley Hall. Amidst 250 acres of parkland, the Hagley estate boasts a rich history, yet on its doorstep lies a darkness that refuses to be forgotten. In April 1943, within the tranquility of Hagley Wood, a grisly discovery was made. A group of boys stumbled upon human remains concealed within the hollow trunk of a witch elm tree. Who was the unfortunate soul hidden within the tree? Was she a witch? A spy? Or simply someone in the wrong place at the wrong time? And who was responsible for her tragic fate? Join me as I delve into the dark heart of the Hagleywood murder and ask, who put Bella down the witch elm? On Sunday the 18th of April 1943, four boys, Robert Farmer, Thomas Willits, Fred Payne and Robert Hart, were in Hagley Woods looking for birds' nests. Robert Hart climbed up a rather short, squat witch elm and, looking into the hollow trunk, saw a skull. Hooking it out with a stick, it became horrifyingly obvious that these were human remains. Terrified, the boys hastily replaced the skull and fled. It was only once they were safely home that one of them told his father about the discovery and the police were called. The removal of what turned out to be a relatively complete skeleton from the witch elm, the right hand was found 13 paces away, required the destruction of the tree. Unfortunately, this makes it difficult to pinpoint the precise location these days and it also means that the photo appearing in books and online with an arrow saying body was found here isn't a picture of the real discovery site, which was an old and heavily pollarded tree. Which elms are the only elm regarded as being truly native to the UK? Sadly, large trees are rare these days due to the devastating effects of Dutch elm disease. But in 1943, they would have been a common sight in woodlands unmistakable with their gnarled branches and broad canopies. Some folklore sites link elm trees with the underworld, and certainly elm wood was traditionally used to make coffins, a fact unlikely to be of comfort to the poor soul left in the hollow tree in Hagley Wood. The witch in Witch Elm has nothing to do with practitioners of magic or the occult. It simply describes the supple, flexible nature of the wood, but, as we will see, it's an unfortunate coincidence that in such a mysterious case as this, the word witch was able to seep into the collective consciousness. The remains in Hagley Wood were retrieved and studied by Professor James Webster, head of the West Midlands Forensic Science Laboratory, and 81 years later, we really know very little more about the victim than he was able to tell the police and coroner at the time. The deceased was female, aged between 22 and 40 years old, with mousy brown hair and irregular front teeth, and she was small, possibly only 4 foot 10 inches. She had carried a child. The professor estimated that she had died at least 18 months before her body was discovered and that she may have been suffocated. Murder by some person or persons unknown was the verdict of the coroner. Despite all these details about the dead woman, including information on the clothes she had been wearing, no one came forward to identify her and police inquiries got nowhere. Then, approximately eight months after the discovery of the remains, chalked messages started to appear on walls and the sides of buildings. Who put Bella down the witch elm, Hagley Wood? Who put Lou Bella down the witch elm? Hagley Wood Bella. Hagleywood Lubella was opposite Rosen Crown. Who put Bella in the Witch Elm? These were reported by some as taunts by a person with inside knowledge of the crime, perhaps even the murderer himself, although others felt they were probably nothing more than hoaxes. The name, however, stuck. The murder victim found in the Witch Elm became known as Bella. Ten years later, in 1953, there had been no real progress in the investigation when a mysterious letter was received by the Wolverhampton Express and Star. 
The letter said that the affair is closed and involves no witches, black magic or moon knight rites. Much was made of this and subsequent contact with the initially anonymous correspondent by the newspaper's reporters. Police interviewed the writer of the letter, a lady named Una Hainsworth, who claimed that Bella was a Dutch girl who had been killed by Una's ex-husband and a mysterious Mr. Van Ralt. None of this stood up to scrutiny or gave the police any real leads, but it seems to be where the more lurid theories about Bella, her death and her last resting place in the Witch Elm took root. Witchcraft and spies. Witchcraft was still a crime in Britain when the remains were found, and anthropologist Dr Margaret Murray put forward a theory that Bella's murder was connected to witchcraft. Like the 1945 Lower Quinton murder of Charles Walton on Meon Hill. Dr Murray suggested that placing the body in the hollow of a tree was an occult act, linked with sacrifices, and noted that one of Bella's hands had been found 13 paces from the witch elm. Could this have been an attempt to produce a hand of glory? The severed hand of a corpse which, when pickled with herbs, has supernatural powers. Dr Murray's suggestion about witchcraft was taken up and run with by the writer Donald McCormick in his 1968 book Murder by Witchcraft, a study of the Lower Quinton and Hagley Wood murders. McCormick wrote that it was an ancient tradition that the spirit of a dead witch could be imprisoned in the hollow of a tree, that Hagley Wood was frequented by witches, and that Dr Murray had visited the village and met with hostility from locals when she mentioned witchcraft in connection with Bella. McCormick also claims to have had numerous conversations about the case with Dr Murray. The problem is that McCormick's book was published after Dr Murray's death, and he is now known to have been at best a hoaxer who mixed fact and fiction for fun, at worst a fraud who fabricated data to further his own career. Obsessed with espionage and the Secret Service, he was a real-life friend of Ian Fleming, McCormick decided that Una Hainsworth's story about the Dutch girl could mean Bella was a spy. This was, of course, all happening in the middle of the Second World War and spies were a real threat. But I fear there's nothing in his book we can rely on. McCormick's presentation of made-up conversations, imagined documents and non-existent sources as facts has, sadly, influenced everything that has followed. For example, in 1999, when Who Put Bella in the Witch Elm Graffiti appeared on the obelisk, the Birmingham Post reported that the dead woman had been dubbed Bella because it was short for Bella Donna on the premise that she may have been a witch. The missing hand was a classic sign of black magic execution. In a 2018 article, Birmingham Live described Bella as the victim of a tangled web of espionage and black magic, who had been ritualistically maimed in a satanic ceremony and was suspected of being a Nazi spy. This just isn't true. In 2005, 62 years after the discovery of Bella, the police closed the case. There were no clear investigative leads, her bones had, horrifyingly, been lost, and any person involved, if surviving, would have been over 80 years old. But whilst the police involvement is over, Bella's story isn't. In a 2017 exercise, her face was reconstructed by Professor Caroline Wilkinson and a 2023 book on the case by M.J. Tro puts forward an interesting new hypothesis on Bella's identity. And of course, the graffiti remains in place on the Witchbury obelisk, keeping her memory alive. As I contemplate the legacy of Bella, the lingering shadow cast over Hagley Wood by her death, and the ensuing sensationalist accounts and dubious theories, one fact stands out. A life was lost, and justice has not been done. Beyond the realm of speculation lies the soul of a young woman who should be remembered not as an enemy agent, nor as a symbol of superstition, but as a nameless victim deserving of dignity, justice, and one day, hopefully, peace. Peace.